and Lana come out of the bedroom door and she says, where's your father? I says, my father, my dad, I stay at home. I never felt safe, never did. You were always, always on your guard, always frightened, always thinking somebody was going to come after you. I felt very lonely, very alone. I cried every day of my life. Every night I cried. You heard me down to cry in the dark. No grown man broke his heart. In our house that was buzzing, singing, carrying on, wrestling. House just died. who were the best and the happiest life. We had seven children and we wanted for nothing. He was walking away behind the bar and three men came in. One of them came up the counter and said, what do you call, are you John Tone? He said, yes, I sure am. And he said he pulled a gun and he just never stopped firing till he was finished. Our lives just shut down. Shut down completely. And to be honest, in our after, I just lost the world they love. And my youngsters just, I've never seen youngsters that just, just changed in seconds. He loved for the, me, the Waynes and the bar. And he always said, I'm retiring at 40. We're going to have a couple of hard years money-wise, but we're going to retire at 40 and we're going to have a life. He didn't see past 35. I decided, right, I've enough tablets here, I'll end it. This is God, but I'm ashamed to tell. So they all went to bed that night, and I thought, right, I'll have a look in at them all night, and I'm going to undertake my tablets. Looked at in all the rooms, they were all sleeping, and I thought, who's going to rear them? Who wants them? I had them. All I said to them was, not one of you boys ever get involved in anything because I will have to end my life. I couldn't take it. I mean, if one of them had taken a gun up, it would have been the end of me, to be honest. There was no support out there. Nobody ever came near us. He died in November, and that one come to the door in December to say, are you all right? How's things? My own family just full stop, that's all. But nobody ever offered us any help. Life turned completely normal for me the man to get married here. You just can't believe it's so real and that's... You know, that was the end of a real... real good life and a real good man and everything. That's the best thing I ever got in my life. I love it. And I, I love all my grandchildren for being involved in it and Thomas too. They see the flowers and see the everything. Loads of children and grandchildren and great grandchildren and everything. I just think I've achieved everything in the world. They were recruiting for the RUC reserves at that time. So it was actually uh, not for Queen and Country. Although it was good to serve Queen and Country, but it was for the extra money, if I'm being honest. My first force training class, we were, the sergeant who was taking it was showing us uh, photographs of some of the atrocities that were carried out by the provisional IRA. And one was a photograph of a guy who was bound and gagged. And it was a guy that I went to school with. It was just horrendous. Right, at that time, females weren't armed. Um, we were trained in how to use a gun, but that was only um, if, say, for example, the constable that we were out with, or whoever it was, um, if he got shot. Uh, the only other time that I ever handled guns was whenever the guys were getting out of the Land Rover. I was the one that had to hand out the guns and the machine guns and whatever. It was petrifying. And there would have been bullets coming at us, and yet I had nothing, not even a shield. 
you went into a restaurant, you made sure that your back wasn't at the door, you knew you could see who was coming in. Um, just always that fear that someone was going to ambush or shoot you or just always there. I used to pray, please God, don't let anybody be here to get me tonight. And I didn't know if it was going to be the IRA or the UDA or whatever, or UVF. I just didn't know who it was going to be. You couldn't put any part of your uniform out in the line because um, somebody would see and so, oh, there's a policewoman lives there. If you were out and there was a bomb and you seen horrific things, you come back, you were debriefed, that was it. You went off home um, and went about your, your business the next day. There was um, no counselling, nobody to talk to you. Um, no, just nothing. I think that it did affect my health. I think my mental health was affected as well. I really don't know how I coped with it all, but you did. I would like to think that one day I would feel completely at ease uh, and not be scared or not have feelings that maybe, you know, something might happen or... But there's always that we we something. Once I was 18 and he worked in Everton Barracks as a painter and he had signed up to join the British Army. So on the Friday, he left work with his best mate, Bert Slater, and was having cheerio drinks, goodbye drinks. And then Monson and Bert were abducted. They were held in Bunkrana, where they were tortured by the IRA and brutally murdered. They were shot through the head, put black bags over their heads and left them lying in Shares Mountain. Me and a friend of mine was walking up the playground and I heard a girl saying to another girl, the police are across this house. And I knew then. The day Wonson's body was found was uh, November the 11th and that was the day he was due to go and join the army. My father became an abusive alcoholic. My mother loved on prescription drugs. I remember one day when I was about 12, I was in my bedroom and I could hear my mother. She was, Her bedroom was next to me and squealing and she had the bedroom curtains on fire and she was squealing, I want to die, I want to die. That was only one occasion of many. She took overdoses. She wanted to die. She wanted to be with Watson. My father gave her so many beatings. She was a cleaner. And I said my father bit her face in the mirror in the hall one morning before she went out to her work. And also the fellas, they got a lot of beatings, sore beatings. For what my father did to the fellas, my mother then did to me. Life after one son was hell. At one time I would have swapped places with him. I'd have rather died than love the life after it. Nobody cared. Nobody looked out. I was left to my own devices. Stood in street corners drinking. I could do what I wanted. Played hockey for dairy, but my mother never ever saw me play hockey. She never seen me with a hockey stick in my hand. If you had asked her where Sharon playing hockey the day, she couldn't have told you. I could have been in Timbuktu. I don't like what happened in our life after Wonson, but I don't blame them. I blame the situation. I just wish that there had been help. Nobody ever came and asked us, were we okay? There never was anybody come to our door. Even to my mother and father, never mind the children. I'm glad I've come out the other end of it. I'm a stronger person, obviously, because of it. We were a happy family. Um, there was nine of us. There was six gears, three boys. The house never emptied. It was always a full house. People always called in, dropped in for a cup of tea. My mum and daddy were very popular, you know. The rioting was going on at that time, but it was at the lower part of William Street. And then the next thing, there was like a big rumble. And the living room door flew open. And I could see all these heads bobbing up and down, you know, running through the house. 
And then the next thing with Ali was shouting, you know, watch the wings, watch the wings. And the loving room full with people. I could feel a weight on top of me. And it was actually Freddie Bud lying on top of me because the police had run on and they were beating everybody in the room. And they were shouting and sh roaring and they could hat. And his blood then was just dripping all over me. And when he got up off the chair, I got up. And my daddy was lying in the middle of the floor in a pile of blood and bleeding from everywhere. And I just looked and thought, my daddy's dead. And I remember walking down the stairs and the first thing I noticed was there was a wild lot of blood all up the walls. And it was just, you know, a right wild sight to, be, to see. And we just walked into chaos. Just didn't, nobody knew what to do. His eyes were jet black. His head was covered in stitches. He, they broke his false teeth when under his mouth. These glasses were like trunging on his face. He was never the same after it. He was, seemed to be always scared, like all the time. And uh, he went to bunk around with my granny one day and my granddad took him not down a run, back up again. And that night we all went to bed and there was a terrible noise coming from the bedroom, downstairs, his bedroom. Somebody gave him for breath and it was my daddy actually taking a heart attack and he unfortunately died suddenly. It was really the next morning I realised that he was dead, like, but they were trying to keep it back from as long as they could. But it took me a while to believe he was never coming back again. My mother's was determined that we were going to be happy as Normal. time went on and she did bring happiness back into the house, believe it or not, like, you know. So we went to uh, uh, the Fay and we had a great time on the farm, it was brilliant. But there was riots going on in Derry and Ritchie's factory was burnt to the ground and the wall of Ritchie's factory fell on top of our house. So our house also went. I remember my mum being in despair at night and I know that she walked up the street and stood watching the house burn in front of her. All her memories gone. Everything to do with my daddy's life all went no, up in smoke. You know, we're 48 years down the line now. It's never going away until it's redressed, you know, properly. He was murdered and nobody really gives a damn. That's the way I feel about it, except us. People say to us that we need to move on, but we can't move on because we've had no closure. Um, I mean, they protect their UC more than they protect us. Don't go down two roads in life. And I'm lucky that I've got the right road. I could have very easily went the wrong. I did what I had to do. And I felt it did make a difference. I just can't, I suppose, let this go because I think that we, we deserve justice like everybody else. And you can't move on with your life till things are resolved and that we get answers and the truth. John was very good, just we didn't talk about it. They couldn't cope and I wasn't able to cope. I was no good to them then, but I'm the happiest person now. And...